Here at Art Resin, we are so proud that we have a product that is water clear, but we are not gonna talk about that today. In fact, today we are gonna talk about what nobody wants to talk about, yellowing. It's true that Art Resin has a shelf life, just like lots of other art materials that you may find in the art store. You can find our manufacturing date on the label, and basically the shelf life is 12 months unopened or six months once it's been opened. And this date just refers to the length of time that you can expect the product to remain water clear. After that, you may see some yellowing in the hardener, but that doesn't mean it's fit for the garbage. In fact, in this video, we are gonna show you four different ways that you can use up that yellowed hardener. Art resin shelf life begins to shorten once it comes in contact with oxygen. That's why the shelf life is only six months once you open it. So just like when you open milk and it starts to go bad rather quickly, or when you cut an apple and it starts to turn brown, that's oxidization as well. And to a certain extent, there's nothing we can really do about it, except for making sure we always put the lids back on the bottles. Now, just to be clear, yellowing that happens due to oxidization is a lot different from other yellowing that can sometimes happen due to UV light damage. One happens in the liquid state and it's due to oxygen. The other happens in the cured state and again, that's due to UV light damage. But we got you covered there too. Art Resin is chemically engineered to offer the best yellowing protection on the market. So what do you do with Art Resin that may be past its shelf life? Well, first of all, don't throw it out. It will still operate as intended, which means the chemical reaction will still take place. So long as you measure and mix appropriately, that chemical reaction will happen and it doesn't matter if that hardener has turned a little yellow or not. Secondly, the yellowing that you do see in the hardener bottle probably looks a lot worse than it really is because you're looking at it in bulk. By the time you spread it out, it won't look quite so yellow. And don't forget, you're going to dilute that hardener anyways with your 50-50 resin hardener mixture. So you're cutting it in half yet again. But let's get on with it. Let's see what projects you can make with your resin that is past the shelf life. Here's Joanne to show us what she's got. Okay, let's get started. So you can see here, I've got two sets of art resin. This one is brand new. I just pulled it out of the warehouse and it's as fresh as can be. This one here, you can tell the label is quite a bit older and uh, this is from 2016. Dave gave me these bottles when I started in September 2016, so that's how old they are. Uh, and you can see the hardener has significantly yellowed. Now, you might look at this and think um, you can't do anything with it, that it's a waste, but that is not true at all. In fact, once you mix the resin with it, which stays clear, as you can see, um, the resin will dilute this yellowed color quite a bit and you can see it on this piece here. This was done with uh, yellowed hardener and the clear resin and the yellow color actually isn't too bad and it's really only when you hold it up against a piece that was done with fresh art resin that you can see uh, it does have a bit of a yellow tinge to it. So although you might not want to use yellowed hardener over a white piece, there are lots of different ways you can use it and you'll never know there was ever a yellow issue. So I'm going to walk you through a few of those today including resining over wood, uh, using alcohol ink to make coasters, tinting um, the resin with resin tint to make some flow art. And then last, we're gonna resin over some brightly colored artwork that has no white in it at all. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here is a perfect way to use your yellowed resin. Uh, if you get a piece of artwork that is really brightly colored, that has very little to no white, um, or even one that's painted using dark colors, it's really gonna disguise uh, any yellowing. You're not gonna know at all. And just to show you, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. So we've got two pieces of artwork here. They're both really, really brightly colored, almost the same. Uh, one I'm gonna coat with fresh resin, the other one I'm going to coat with the resin uh, with the yellowed hardener and I guarantee you, you won't be able to tell the difference when I'm done. So let's get started. I've got my clear resin here, let me put my gloves on. Now I'm going to dome this, which means I'm just going to bring the resin right up to the edges without going over so I haven't taped the back or anything like that. I love doming myself because it keeps my work uh, surface nice and clean and there's less cleanup and it's easier, I think. Okay, so for this size, these are 12 by 12, so I'm going to need five ounces. So two and a half ounces of resin, two and a half ounces of hardener. Okay. OK, 
Okay, and I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna stir for three minutes, scrape the sides and bottom as I go. Okay, next I'm going to do the yellowed hardener with the resin. But remember I said when you add the clear resin in, it's gonna dilute this. So watch when I start mixing. It's already starting to clear up quite a bit. Now I wanna show you the resin in the bottle and how yellow it looks, and then compared to the mixed resin and hardener together and how diluted it has become. So that's a, quite a significant difference there between the mixed and the uh, hardener in the bottle. Okay, and then next I wanna show you the fresh resin compared to the yellowed. So really, it's not a huge difference at all. It looks, looks far worse in the bottle than it does actually mixed up. So I honestly, when you put it on this brightly colored artwork, you will not be able to tell the difference. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so we'll start with the fresh resin and hardener. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour it on here. And I'm just gonna grab my spreader. And again, I'm gonna dome it, so I'm gonna spread it out without going over. Okay, now you can use this big spreader for doming, but I like using a smaller um, spatula. Just gives me a little more control. So all I'm doing is just, I'm not using a lot of pressure, I'm just nudging, literally just nudging the resin right up to the edges and not letting it go over the sides. And because art resin is so nice and thick, it kind of just stays where you put it. Perfect, so I've got my piece domed and now I'm gonna pour the yellowed hardener. All right, so I am done the doming, and honestly, I cannot tell the difference at all. So I'm just going to torch now. I'll get rid of those bubbles. Okay, beautiful. That is it. So I'm going to get my dust cover. I'm going to cover these up and let them cure overnight. Tomorrow we'll reveal them to you, and I promise you, you will not be able to tell the difference between the uh, painting with the fresh resin and the painting with the yellowed partner. So we will see you tomorrow. Okay, so we have our cured paintings here. Now, not only does the resin make the colors absolutely pop on these paintings, but you also cannot tell which one had the fresh resin and which one had the yellowed hardener. So just in case, it was this one. And in fact, I actually had to make a mark for myself so I could tell the difference between the two. They both look beautiful, absolutely look identical. So again, using yellowed hardener on brightly colored paintings is the way to go for sure. Another perfect way of using up your yellowed hardener is to make coasters using alcohol ink, uh, very similar to these ones here. Once you've got the alcohol ink in the resin, I promise you won't be able to tell that you ever had any yellow hardener. Okay, so side-by-side -side comparison once again using the um, fresh art resin and using this older art resin with the yellow hardener. I've already got it measured and mixed in my cups here. Um, this one obviously is the fresh art resin. This one here is the older uh, with the yellowed hardener and really I mean side by side you can tell that this one has a bit of a yellow tinge but really if you compare it again to the one in the bottle it's really diluted so here we go I'm using two ounces total so one ounce of resin and one ounce of hardener and as I normally always do uh, when I'm making coasters, I warmed up my uh, resin and hardener first before I measured and mixed. And warming it up just really helps to thin out the resin and you'll get far less bubbles. Okay, so I've got my alcohol ink here. And whatever colors you wanna use, it's totally fine, it's up to you. But always make sure when working with alcohol ink and resin, if you wanna get that really cool effect, make sure you have white on hand. Uh, the reason being is that white is heavier than the other colors and it will drive the color down and create those really cool tendrils uh, that you get with alcohol ink coasters. Okay, so uh, we'll start with pink. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing in both coasters, just to really show an equal um, comparison. So whenever you add a color, always make sure you add white immediately afterwards. And as I said, it's gonna drive that color down. Okay, so wherever you have a dot of color, make sure you put a dot of white on top. You can just keep layering your alcohol ink. And with each layer of ink, it's gonna create more and more patterns and depth in your alcohol ink coaster. 
All right, if you want to, you can even like take a toothpick and you can even like, you know, make some swirls as well. So that kind of creates a really cool look as well. So we'll do the same thing on this side. I think this looks really great and we'll see what they look like uh, tomorrow when we unmold them. And just an important note, um, always remember when you're working with alcohol ink and resin, you don't ever want to use your torch because as we know, alcohol is a solvent and highly flammable. Okay, so we'll just leave them like this. We'll cover them up for the night and uh, we'll see how they look tomorrow. Okay, so let's reveal our alcohol ink coasters. I'm gonna demold this one first. This was made with a clear art resin and it is beautiful. Okay, now let's compare the one made with the yellowed hardener. And they look identical. Honestly, you cannot tell which is which. The white alcohol ink is super white and they both look beautiful. So alcohol ink coasters, another perfect way to use up yellowed hardener. So now we've got probably my favorite way to use up yellowed resin, and that is to tint it. So I've got my uh, resin tint bottles here, and I'm gonna create some flow art. So I've already uh, measured and mixed and separated out my art resin. So here we've got the clear, uh, fresh art resin, and here we've got the yellowed art resin. You can see side by side, this one does have that bit of that yellow tinge, but once we add these beautiful colors, you will never know this was ever yellow. So let's get started. So I'm gonna do kind of a, an ocean inspired palette. I've got my blues and greens and bronze and white, and I've already measured and mixed and separated out my uh, art resin in separate cups. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my resin tint. Now the resin tint is really, really saturated. You don't need very much at all. So I'm gonna start with a pearl green. Okay, so we'll just add maybe a dozen drops or so. Okay, so that looks good. And you know what I love to do is just to punch up the color a little bit, I love adding a drop or two of the original um, green just to kind of give a little bit of a boost as well. So I'm just gonna add a couple of drops of original green. And now I'm gonna move on to blue. So I've got my pearl blue here. I love this one, it's one of my favorites. And next we've got original blue, add a little dark blue in there. Next is bronze. I always love adding a little bit of metallic, either gold or bronze. Okay, and finally, uh, white. Okay, so I've got all my colors mixed up. I'm just gonna grab my stir stick here and start stirring. Okay, now the fun part. All right, so I'm gonna start with the green. I've poured all my resin now, so I'm gonna grab my heat gun and just blow the resin around a little bit to create some cool effects. Okay, that looks awesome. I'm just gonna to torch those bubbles out. And because resin tint is non-flammable, remember you can use a torch with it. Okay, I'll just get rid of these bubbles here. There we go. Awesome, and I'll just look in the light. Okay, those look awesome. So I don't know if you can see from here, and we're gonna show you tomorrow after they've cured, but these look identical. You cannot tell which one had the fresh resin and which one had the yellowed hardener, but we will show you tomorrow after they've cured. Okay, so here we have our flow art that we made using resin tinted with resin tint. Uh, you can see they both look absolutely identical. And this one actually is my favorite project out of all of them, and here's why. Take a peek at the white tinted resin. It's still white. And if you compare it to the one made with the fresh art resin, they look identical. So tinting your resin is another great solution for working with yellowed hardener.
Okay, so now we have probably the easiest way to use up your yellowed hardener, and that is to apply it over wood. Uh, again, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison using fresh art resin and the older art resin with the yellowed hardener. I've got my wood already prepped, and in fact, this was one piece of wood. It was a piece of walnut. And just to keep everything absolutely equal, we cut it in half. Um, I've got it sealed, and it's already propped up on blocks here, ready to be resined. And I'm just gonna grab my level to make sure it's nice and horizontal. This one is perfect. And that one is good too. Okay, so I've got my resin um, already measured and mixed. That's the clear. This one is with the older resin. Again, it's got that yellowish tinge, but just you wait and see. Once I pour it over the wood, you will never ever know that this was ever yellow. Okay, so that's it, I'm ready to pour. So let's start with our fresh art resin. So I'm just gonna spread it out. This one, I'm gonna let the resin run right over the sides on this one, just because it's, it's just much easier. And I think it looks nice on the bark as well. Okay, and I'll just get my spreader here. Just spread it out, and then I'm gonna get right in there with my gloved hands. And I'm just gonna work it in. So I always love keeping one of these foam brushes handy whenever I'm doing something with a live edge and just work it into all of those little nooks and crannies <laughs> in the bark. And now, I'm gonna grab my torch. Okay, we'll get rid of these bubbles. Now, sealing your wood is really gonna help prevent off-gassing, and off-gassing is when the wood uh, releases its trapped air into the resin in the form of bubbles. So, sealing it first really helps to minimize any off-gassing. All right, so that looks good. Now we're gonna move on to our yellowed art resin. And honestly, you cannot tell the difference. Art resin looks so beautiful over wood. Just makes the grain pop and the color pop. Okay, so that's all poured on. I'm just gonna grab my spreader here and spread it out to the edges. And just be careful too, when you are um, using your gloved hands or the brush on the sides, all these little bits and pieces are gonna come off. So you don't wanna be careful you don't get it mixed into the resin on the top of your board. Otherwise, they're gonna cure right into your resin. And keep it moving at all times. You can see all those bubbles popping. All right. So we're all done. Uh, they look amazing and honestly, I, they look identical to me. I can't tell which has the fresh art resin and which has uh, the older art resin. So tomorrow after they've cured, we'll show them to you and we'll see if you can spot the difference. Okay, so we have our dried wood pieces here. Now, if you remember, it was one piece of wood that we cut into two, and they both look gorgeous. In fact, I cannot tell the difference between the side that was made with the yellowed hardener and the one that was made with the fresh art resin. So it was this one. This one had the yellowed hardener. It looks gorgeous as does this piece here that had the fresh art resin. So applying over wood is a fantastic way and super easy way of using up your yellowed hardener and you will never ever be able to tell the difference. So there you have it, four great projects that you can try out on your own. Now just a friendly word of advice, this oxidization issue no longer becomes an issue once the product is cured. So that's a good thing. If you are concerned about it, then always, always, always put your lids back on right away. And it also makes sense to buy a size of art resin that fits the size of project that you're working on. Now, if you do find yourself the proud owner of some yellowed hardener, then you can put it on a charcuterie board, you can use it tinted in flow art or on petri dish art, or just use it over some dark or colorful artwork. And whatever you do, enjoy and have fun.